Welcome back to the lab folks. So today we're going to have a, a look at this Venersi DMT99 Intelligent Multimeter. So uh, yeah, let's break into it here and have a look at it. Now I did receive this at no cost from Fernisi for me to uh, do just what I'm doing here, have a review on it. And I did insist that uh, I would do the review my way. And I'm, I'm actually a little bit excited about this. I've never had an intelligent multimeter before in my hands, so I'm going to do this for the first time. And now all the Fenershi products come with this little tag here, so pass QC. And it comes with a manual. Here's the meter itself. Oh, it's, uh, it's more compact than I thought it would be. It's a nice size, not too thick and heavy. And uh, it has a rechargeable battery in it. Now, I wonder if it comes with enough charge on it for me to do this. Oh, probably a good idea to select English in this case. There we go. Oh, it boots up pretty quick. And it's in auto mode. Okay. And the battery looks like it's got a full set of indicators up there, if that indeed is the battery indicator. So let's take this off here. Do -do 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 -do. Here we go. It's pretty reflective. It could be uh, in some orientations in my lab, because I have overhead lighting. That could be an issue, but let's see how it works out for us. Tilting bale at the back. No access to any fuses without uh, opening it up. Nice little holders for the cables here. They're nice and soft. The rest of the outside of the case is not a cheap feeling plastic. It's fairly nice stuff. Okay, let's see what else is in the box here. All right, we got USB cable for charging. And we have a set of probes. Nothing else, I assume? No. Let's see, what do I think of these probes? They're soft, but they're vinyl, PVC. They're not, um, they're not silicone or anything like that, but they're not bad. And let's see what the probe tips themselves look like. Oh, they're very sharp and they look gold plated, so that's nice. Yeah, they are really sharp. I like, I like them sharp. Okay, so we've got uh, different modes here. Mode selection, regular, recording, monitor, and threshold settings. In the monitor mode, you set it to various thresholds for uh, voltage, current, and temperature. And in that mode, it'll, it'll warn you if it exceeds either minimum or the maximum, either direction. History record, we haven't have any yet. We don't have any records yet. System settings, you got a couple of themes here. See, what's that one look like? Oh, okay. I prefer the other one. So we go back up. There we go. And reset. Notice we set all settings. We don't want to do that right now. And about. And yep. So it's now. DMT 99 version 2.4. I don't know if that's the firmware revision level or the hardware revision level, but it's some revision level. Okay, and we're back now into auto mode. Now, if we click this, it should go into current mode. This would be uh, volts, ohms, capacitance, diodes, and continuity, NCV and live, hertz. Is this NCV, hold on. Yep, and it works. Now, is this, this live here? This should be able to determine whether or not I've got live or neutral. So, into neutral. That's into live. It seems to be working just right. That's a handy feature, actually. Mostly, I'm interested in, in how, in auto mode, how quickly and how accurately it determines what it is it's connected to and give you a meaningful measurement. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be accurate. Here's one thing I'd like to check. Now, I quite often use these in my meters in order to attach up a cable. 
and do some monitoring and you know they're very very handy for doing that especially if it's a BNC cable or, or some other cable that I've attached up to it you know something like this and these are all you know 19 millimeters three quarters of an inch apart and uh, see it doesn't fit there and uh, I think that's a bit of a fail um, it won't stop me from using the meter of course but I think meter manufacturers should be aware of this that there's there are times when the user needs to use something like this or something like this and they're all standard let's hook up the leads now let's see if we can figure out whether or not uh, we've got a resistor here and how long does it take so let's go with like 1k here that's pretty fast I'm actually I'm amazed. I'm amazed. That is really, that's really quite fast. Okay, we've got 10 mega ohms here. All right, let's see if we can uh, detect if these are diodes or not. No, it, it's not being able to detect the diodes very well. It's coming up with resistance there, a voltage there. Doesn't know what to do there. So if we go into this mode, I select this and hopefully it can handle this a little bit better. Yeah. Can light up the LEDs. Even the blue LED and the white LED. Okay. But uh, it, it didn't have, it wasn't able to auto detect that the, these were diodes. Let's see if we can do so with capacitors let's try some in the in the middle range here no nope, it's not being able to do that okay let's see when we go into that mode what do we get here okay that's right on that's pretty close okay a little optimistic there Pretty good. Now, this is going to take a while. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can get some current going through it. This is where I'll bring out another meter and kind of check them together, put them in the same loop. You know, hoping that helps a little bit here with the glare. So we've got uh, about two milliamps going through it on the microamp range here. And we're getting nice comparable numbers here. This one's bouncing around a little bit more than this one. Bring it up to around about 10 or so. So this has gone overload. We'll have to go into the uh, milliamp range on this one. And there we go. So yeah, we're in pretty good agreement again. So doing that, but it's not, it's not able to auto. So if I go into auto mode, it doesn't detect current uh, automatically even though uh, inputs are different for current so you'd think it, it would but it doesn't so in in current mode you have to kind of select the mode first okay so we'll select that and we're in milliamp mode and there we are at 10.29 milliamps let's let's bring it up to 100 milliamps 110 there we go and when does it go into overload here? 400, 500, 600, 800, 900. Okay, so it goes into overload there and we have to go up to the 10 amp range. There we go, one amp. Yeah, let's bring it up, but I can go to two or three. And I think that's my belt, my most there's three point two amps and yeah we're in perfect agreement let's go to auto mode and now we're going to let's take this out of the circuit here and i've got eight volts on it on the power supply there so let's see what it does with that let's see if it immediately comes up with a voltage and it does very quickly too so it does what it does in auto mode which seems to be just resistance and voltage it's extremely quick to react so that's that's very nice i do like that about it 
and so it auto ranges just nicely as well not an issue there at all okay so another thing that's supposed to work in auto mode is continuity so let's see how well that works that takes a little bit of time it's a nice loud beep but it does take about i'd say about a quarter of a second let's see if we go into this mode here and put it into continuity mode to begin with oh it's it's fast and it's latched so, so i got no problems with that that's that's pretty good so in auto mode though it's just a tad it's a tad slow in auto mode but i wouldn't worry about that if you're going to do some serious continuity work just switch it over to continuity mode that's no issue at all all right, so I've got the function generator set up here for one kilohertz, one volt RMS with a one volt DC positive offset. Let's see what this makes of it. I'm about to turn it on right now. Okay, very quickly came up and it's measuring the AC part of the voltage perfectly. That's good. Okay, let's go into the volts menu here. And okay, it's got the, the volts DC offsets okay. I'm gonna put in 100 kilohertz. Got no problem with that. Let's go to one megahertz. It'll do 20. So what does it say in the specifications? So it claims only 10 megahertz on the frequency, but it will do much better than that. I imagine it beats its specifications on most things. Okay, let's check out uh, a couple of modes we haven't had a look at yet. Uh, let's go in here, into the menu, and let's go over there and go down to recording mode. According to the manual, in recording mode, it'll do pretty well everything. It'll support uh, voltage resistance, diode buzzer, capacitor, high current, low current, frequency, temperature ranges. So, yeah, let's, let's try it with voltage here. So I've plugged in the power supply, we'll turn the power supply on. I've got it at three volts, so this should pop up to three volts. And it does. And if I vary this, it should record that. Now you can also, you can, you can hit the auto menu here and it'll save a voltage for you. So at a time of interest, it'll save a voltage. All right. And then you can go back and you can retrieve those voltages later. All right, let's uh, pop out of here and go down here to history records. And then we can see the different voltages that we had. Now let's try the, the monitor mode. Now I've already got the thresholds set up here. I set them up to plus five volts and plus 15 volts. So anything below plus five volts will be low and anything above plus 15 volts will be high. This is just for demonstration purposes. And I think that actually, you know, setting the, the limits closer together uh, is, is what it's really intended for. So if you were checking out a power supply that's supposed to be between 4.75 volts and 5.25 volts. You'd put your range in 4.725 on the low range, 5.25 on the upper range, and then you can see easily whether or not that power supply meets it. So if you're testing a lot of different power supplies, it's a really handy feature. Now it also does it with current and with temperature. I really do think resistance would be a good thing for them to add, but this is a great start. So let's see, let's see what that looks like. So uh, let's get out of here and we go over here and go down to monitor. Okay, so we're at 9.997, and that would be in range. So that, that yellow display there is in range. If we go up to 15, it should give us some indication that we're out of range. There we go. So, and then let's go down to below 5. And we're on the min. So, yeah, that'd be really, really handy for pass-fail testing. That's an excellent feature. Okay, let me sum up about this little meter here. To put it into two words or three words, I like it. It's, let me tell you what I do like about it. I do like that it's compact. I like that it's rechargeable. I like that it's nice and light. I like the, you know, that it has the NCV as well as the live check feature. The live check feature is really, really handy. NCV, we're all used to that. A lot of meters come with that. The live check feature is less usual, and it's nice to have. I like that it does volts and ohms and continuity in auto mode. 
it is very, very fast in updating, especially for the volts and ohms. It takes about the same length of time for continuity, but continuity is one of those things you want more of an instant response. But if you're, if you're willing to wait a, a quarter of a second or a third of a second or whatever, it, it works perfectly well. If you're not, if you want it faster, it's instantaneous if you just enable the continuity mode. I am absolutely surprised. I thought, you know, from what I've seen about other auto meters online, you know, what, looking at other people's uh, YouTube videos, is that some of them are real dogs as far as how long it takes to register a voltage or a resistance. But this is not like that. This is extremely fast. And it's got a great set of ranges. Uh, it really does. It is quite nice. The only thing I really don't like about it is uh, the spacing on these jacks here. Is, uh, it's not standard. I think that's a little tiny fail there. There are times when you really want that. So I would suggest, uh, if you're interested in it, I'll leave a link to the manual section on their webpage and go over there, download the manual, and read it. Like I say, I'm pretty sure it's going to be accurate, and for what we did go through, it is right on the money. It compares with the Ryman meter. It, you know, it's a perfect tool to have on the electronics bench. It's not built up to like a, a Cat 3 or a Cat 2, and they don't claim that. I mean, there's no thing here that says it's Cat 3 or Cat 2 or whatever. I'd say it's a, it's a, it's a very, very, very nice Cat 1 meter, and you could use it for checking out your mains voltage at home especially in the U.S. and Canada and other places that are around 100, 110 volts. Other than that, yeah, I, I can honestly say I do recommend this. And let me thank Fernisi for, for offering it to me to check it out. It was quite a nice surprise and my first experience with an auto meter, but I was expecting it not to be quite this good. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that. And thanks a lot, guys, for coming out to have a look at this. I really hope you got something out of it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.